This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Some of you may know that I am more of a classic gamer. Now don't get me wrong, modern games are fantastic, Roblox can be fun every once in a while, but I really gravitate more towards the Super Nintendo and the N64. And one of my dreams as a kid was to be able to go back and to improve or remix or reimagine these old games in a more modern style. One incredible example of this is the Mother One 25th Anniversary Edition, where they improved upon the art and just made it look fantastic and really breathed new life into an old game. So, with that said, if you couldn't tell by the name of the video, we're going to be reimagining a classic Nintendo game, but I can't do it alone. So I decided to challenge Vimlark as well. Now, one thing to clarify, we're not going to be programming any games. This is purely just a mock-up of what we think the game would look like if we did it in our style. Now here's the challenge. We don't get to pick which game we want to work on. Instead, we both pick the screenshot of a classic game we really love and exchange. Not only that, but we're both going to reimagine each other's personal projects in our own art style. So you're going to see what the goodest version of Monkeys with Guns would look like. So without further ado, let's quit talking and get started. But before we get started, Squarespace. Making your own website or online store can be a huge pain in the butt from scratch. Believe me, I've done it many times before. And the best way to cut the hassle is to use Squarespace. From selling your products online, making a portfolio or gallery of your work, or even something as tedious as image scaling, is so much easier and saves you so much time with Squarespace. As the internet expands, I truly believe that everyone should have internet real estate, but creating your own website doesn't mean you have to be disconnected from social media. With Squarespace, you can connect your social profiles so that way you can instantly post on different platforms, making it fantastic and easy to post your new product or game. Make sure to go check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready you're all set to launch go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain the classic game that Vimlark sent me is probably one that most of you out there have never played it's called Kid Icarus and it was released on the NES in 1987 the game follows a protagonist named Pit, who's an angel that is trying to collect these three sacred items to fight Medusa. And if you couldn't tell, the game is based off of Greek mythology, so there's a lot of different references to that. Now, there's only ever been three games in this series, but what most people probably know Pit from is Smash Bros. Brawl and Kid Icarus Uprising, which was released on the 3DS. All in all, I was very excited with his pick because I used to play this quite a bit back in the day, though I was terrible at it. So let's see what we can do. So getting started, this goes pretty fast, but I'm using the pixel edits tiling tool to quickly block in the detail. And the great thing is when I work on the shading on one block, it applies to the other ones. A lot of people ask why I use pixel edit and this is kind of one of the main reasons. I use so many tiles in my games and it's just easy to use. Um, you'll notice I put this white outline. I believe I get rid of it later on, but you'll actually see it return. Um, I don't normally use white outlines, um, but I thought it was kind of a fun kind of extra detail. I have to say it's actually very intimidating recording yourself doing these time lapse. Uh, I've, I've done Pixar on stream many times and was less intimidated. I think the fact that you just know that everything you're doing is being watched and you can't talk about it, you can't defend yourself, is kind of a, kind of a scary thing. But overall, I think it, it went pretty, pretty well and I'm happy with how the piece turns out, as you'll see. But here I'm working on the sky. Here's, this is one of the fun parts, adding the details to the sky in the background, because the original game is really lacking that. It's just a black background. But I do know from the lore of Kid Icarus that you're actually in the sky world at this point. So I wanted to add clouds and a moon and some other things, uh, which I'm adding here. And another important thing was making sure I push back the detail. Um, you'll notice I didn't add shading on that back rock area. And that's because as things get further away, they should have less detail. And that's why I was doing that, add less shading. Now, this is the boss. Um, I don't know why when I was working on this, I didn't know what this boss was supposed to be until afterwards. Apparently, this is Medusa, all right? If you guys know what Medusa looks like, that ain't Medusa. So I'm not sure what happened to Medusa. I think the lore is that 
one of the goddesses turned her into this thing, but I don't know. If I realized it was Medusa, I probably would have played into that a little bit more with the snakes instead of it making it look like green gum stuck to, uh, I don't know, foam on the wall. But I don't really like working on monsters a whole lot. Um, I'm not a spooky guy by any means. I like making cute things. Uh, but this was an interesting challenge. I was trying to make it feel stylized, trying to make it feel kind of cute and charming. I would say it has the same character. It kind of feels like the original game, but it's a little bit more uh, cartoony, which I, I like about it. You'll also notice that I was uh, adding a little bit more details and erasing them. Um, I wanted to make sure I was consistent with my style. That's really important when you're working on these projects. You don't want to have things that have way too much shading and things that don't have enough, unless those things are in the background, like I said. like If you have objects in the background, you don't need any shading on them, or maybe they're just silhouettes. Um, so I, it definitely was a challenge playing around with that, especially these pillars too. You want things to, um, you want them to stand out and so you can notice these details without them interfering with the game. And that's why I, I bring back in that white outline later on uh, to help pull out the, uh, the character detail. So here the, the things are starting to come together. It's, it's starting to feel like a scene. Obviously we're missing a few details and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't include the little snake guy that you see in the image there just because I just felt kind of awkward in the scene and partly because I made Pit a little too big, but we'll get there in a second. Here's another little thing, adding these stars and adding a little lighting on or shading on the, uh, the hills back there. I think I abandoned this uh, shading detail in the character as well. I have to say, it was really intimidating, like trying to make the styles work because uh, I, I wanted to try something different, but I also wanted to do something I was more comfortable with. So there's kind of a 50-50. A and as you'll see, Pit takes a little bit to come together. People are difficult. And I didn't want to make this kind of more realistic looking human character or angel, I think is what he's supposed to be. It wouldn't make sense with how stylized everything else is. So it's a process and if you're the same exact way, if your character looks like a Terraria character, but it doesn't match the rest of your, your game, don't worry, it's a process. You just have to keep playing around. As you, you can tell here, I'm going crazy. I'm going all out right now, trying to make this look redeemable. But yeah, every everything in art is a process and a lot of my pieces look terrible until like the last five seconds, so. Here I realized that the angle was uh, off on his face because you kind of got a quarter angle on Medusa, but you don't have it. It's like a side on perspective of Pit. So I wanted to change it up. And like I said, also kind of stylize his face. I think I actually stretch out his face a little bit more if I remember correctly. But at this point, I'm just adding the details, adding more details to his sandal. Yeah, there we go. I stretch out his face, made him a little bit wider made his head bigger too. I wanted to make him look cute and stylized. If you want things to look cartoony and stylized, then you gotta exaggerate features. But at the end, I added the white outlines to make him stand out, which I, th I thought was a nice detail. I, I added some arrows with the white, and uh, yeah, just a few more details here. And that's pretty much it. It was, a, it was a fun challenge. It definitely kept me on my toes there. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Let me know in the comments what you would have changed or add. But that's uh, challenge one completed. It's time to move on to challenge two. Now for my second challenge, I need to reimagine Monkeys with Guns. Now, if you've never heard of that game, it's actually a game being developed by Vimark that he started about two years ago, I believe. It's a party game, you gotta fight each other, there's monkeys, there's hats, there's craziness. All in all, it looks like a super fun game, and I can't wait for it to come out. But anyway, let's get started. Now for the second piece, I have to say I, I struggled a little bit, uh, a little bit more, and I think Part of it was me making the canvas so small. 
So I like to keep my canvases small because I like to keep my game small. Um, they, they make it easier to manage and I think they make your they make it so you have to simplify your artwork and you can't you can't go overboard. Now I really struggled because I was gonna go for like a very minor shading. Like as you can tell these spikes until right now I'm adding shading, but before they were completely flat. And I kind of abandoned that idea quickly. You'll see me fight this and go back and forth with too much shading, too little shading. And I, I wanted to go for maybe a more realistic shading style, but then I realized that like the background uh, of the game already kind of has that. Uh, so it'd be interesting to try something different. And sure enough, I kind of went for the same style. This has been like my go-to style recently, but it was really cool to recreate these kind of iconic characters in a more simplified style. Now, one of the biggest issues was the color for me. Um, maybe for some people you won't notice it, but I end up using a couple different greens. I use a cool green on the vines and a warm green for the background. Now you're like, well, what's the difference, good guess? It's, there's a big difference and you kind of see it stand out. It's kind of awkward. They don't, they kind of clash later on. Another hard part about this was because I had such a small canvas, Things got busy fast, especially with outlines. It's really easy to be very overwhelmed by all the outline thickness. And I kind of use the white outlines based off of the reference around the monkeys to make them stand out. It definitely was an issue I had to fix. It took just a little bit of finagling to figure it out. Right here, I'm messing around with texture. I was like, hey, maybe I'll, maybe I'll make the background even more busy now. And then I, I quickly uh, took a step back from that and uh, simplified things as well. So. I wanted to make the, the kind of chaotic forest, swampy forest in the background. I think I did a little bit of shading on the outside of those silhouettes. And this crate was, was pretty tricky. Um, normally what I do if I do these outline styles is I don't have the black outline inside of the object. I only have the black outline and the outside. Games like Mother 3, uh, does that really well. A lot of Game Boy games do that. But for this, I don't know, I was very committed to using the black outline everywhere. And like I said, it kind of breaks the consistency in some areas. So that's something if you're working on your own project to just look out for, making making sure. Like I should have used the black outlines probably inside that uh, the parachute if I was going to use them for the box as well. If you can see right there, the vines, oh, that, that green just doesn't go with the background. And I ended up fixing it and messing around with, in Photoshop and Paint.net to just finalize the colors. So do know that I did change some of it. But other than that, I, I feel like the piece had some character. I added different expressions to the monkey. And of course, this monkey kicked the bucket here, unfortunately. Sad, sad monkey. I also played around with like maybe not having the white outlines um, against the ground. I don't know why, it just looked really awkward, it felt separate, so. And then the last part was adding these destructible pieces and uh, that was it. Let me know what you guys think. Would you ever wanna see a version of Monkey of Guns that looks like this? and if you like these final uh, colors better than what I was working on. So that's it for challenge two. Oh boy, all right, we did it. We reimagined two fantastic games. Now, if you want to see the challenge that I gave Vimlark, make sure to check out his video when it comes out. The games I sent him were Earthbound on the Super Nintendo and Dewdrop Dynasty. So if you want to see his side of the story and his challenge, please go make sure to check it out and share some love. If you like this style of video, please make sure to give it a like, give it a thumbs up. And if there's someone else that you'd like me to challenge, please make sure to put it in the comments down below and we'll see what happens. Real quick shout out to Rybread, Buddy Games, and Heath Sargent, and the rest of the fantastic Patreon supporters. You guys are fantastic and we couldn't do these videos without you. Anyway, that's it for me this week and I'll see you next time for another Game Dev Adventure.